Okay, this is going to be another super fast demo for deploying an event sourcing solution to Azure using Cosmos DB and Functions. I'm going to assume that you've already seen my two minute introduction to uh, deploying functions for Cosmos DB um, or that you know how to get to this point. Um, so we've got a function here. Um, I actually have changed the code from the boilerplate code that the um, uh, demo uh, created earlier. Um, I, I've added a few things. So of course that de that boilerplate code was just printing some log information uh, whenever a change happened on the database and being read off the change feed. Of course, if we if you want to create an event sourcing solution, we want to actually move data from one place to another, right? So what I'm doing here is um, I have some credentials for a, a, a target collection here uh, that I want to move the data to. Uh, and I am uh, looping over the documents that come in from the change feed from the source collection here. Um, and uh, uh, writing those to the target collection using this create async method uh, on a Cosmos client object. Um, and I just changed the method signature uh, uh, slightly to be an async task so that uh, I can await on this async method here. Uh, and that's really all I've done. Uh, one thing that you're going to need to do is in install uh, this um, uh, the uh, Cosmos DB.NET SDK. Um, uh, um, which I've already done, but uh, you're going to need a NuGet package uh, manager uh, installed here so that you can um, add the package uh, uh, for that. Um, but I obviously don't need to do that because that's already installed. So just to go over it again, what we're trying to do here is move data from one collection to another. In my source collection, the data is partitioned by ID. Uh, and in my target collection, it's partitioned by user. And that's quite a common uh, use case, moving data from one place to another, uh, where the source and target have different um, read and write requ requirements. In this case, I'm partitioning by user because I expect queries to be uh, localized or isolated to um, users and be related to users instead of uh, um, what I assume to be a high um, uh, write throughput um, uh, use case here in my in my source collection. So it's quite m uh, common uh, in event sourcing scenarios to move data around in this respect. This is quite a contrived and simple example, but it kind of illustrates the point. So let's go ahead and just deploy this. We already tested the function earlier, so uh, I'm going to go right ahead and deploy it. Uh, let me just find it down here. So here's my function, my local function at the bottom here. Uh, and I'm just going to click on this icon here to deploy to function app and then I'm going to select my subscription. I'm just going to go create new function app in Azure. I'm not going to go for the advanced option. I recommend that you explore that to see what settings you can change. But this is just a quick start option if you like. Uh, it's going to ask me for a unique name for my function. And that looks like that's unique. And I'm going to select the region and it's going to go ahead and start deploying my function here. Okay, well, it looks like everything deployed here. Of course, it might take a little longer for you uh, to deploy your resources. And uh, don't forget, I'm working within the magic of YouTube here. Um, don't worry about these warnings. They're just local to me or uh, specific to me. If I look at the left-hand side pane here where my subscription is, uh, you can see that what now appears here is a, is a bunch of stuff relating to my uh, function. Of course, you do have options around deployments and CI/CD and pipeline and so on. Recommend that you investigate the best practices around that. This is really just a quick start um, for demo purposes. Uh, if I go to Azure, just to uh, go to my resource groups, I'm expecting to see uh, a resource group named TVK function because that's what I specified. And within there, I'm expecting to see all of the resources I would expect for a function, an app service plan and the function app and so on. And uh, there we have the resources um, that I expected. If I just go into my function here, one thing that the um, uh, the um, deployment will not have propagated is my local app settings. So I'm going to need to uh, go in and configure those uh, right in here. So if I go back to my um, project view here, just go to my local settings. Um, for my source collection, and also I added some parameters here for my target collection, I'm going to need to add these as app settings. So I'm going to just go ahead and do that right now. Of course, we recommend that you use secrets 
rather than adding app settings in this way. Um, you can do it this way, but uh, for security, if you're conscious of, uh, conscious of that, then uh, of course we recommend using Key Vault Secrets. Just going to add my target collection uh, settings here. Just my endpoint URL. And then also the primary key. If I just save that. Okay, so it's, it looks like that's saved. So with those uh, parameters saved and with my app service, uh, with my function running, um, what I expect to see when I go into my database, if I just click into that here, So what I expect to see is if I go into uh, my source collection, if I just add a new item, I'm just going to put an ID in here, uh, and I'm going to put the user field, which remember is the partition key uh, field expected in the target collection. Let me just save that. And what I expect to see is when I go into my target collection with the change feed, uh, being picked up from the function I just deployed, I, sh I expect to see that being propagated in here, and there it is. And that's it.